Hey guys, thank you so much for your interest in my HLSL training DVDs. I'm really excited that you're interested in learning to write HLSL and that you've chosen to use uh, my training videos as your learning resource. I recorded those videos uh, back in between 2006 and 2008 and um, while almost all of the material still works great, there are just a few things that you need to change in order to uh, get the material in the tutorial videos uh, to work correctly. The first is in 3ds Max. So here I've got 3ds Max 2019. And you'll see if I open up one of the, um, one of the demonstration files from the, the DVD sample material that everything comes in just kind of white looking. And that's because the viewport driver for Max uh, has been updated significantly since I created the videos and the default driver no longer supports HLSL shaders as I wrote them uh, correctly. And so we just need to switch the driver. So what we're going to do is come here under the Customize menu, go to Preferences, and go to the Viewports tab. And here I'm going to click Choose Driver. And instead of Nitrous Direct 3D, which is the default, I'm going to switch it to Legacy Direct 3D and hit OK. And it's going to say I need to restart Max in order for this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down Max here, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got 3ds Max running again after a restart. I'm going to come back over here and open up my file again. And now you can see that I've switched my viewport driver. Uh, my demo file here is showing up correctly. The next thing that I want to talk about is NVIDIA's FX Composer uh, and, and uh, what software you should be using for editing your shaders. NVIDIA no longer supports FX Composer and it's really hard to find FX Composer 1.8 out on the web. And so what I'm recommending that you use is a program called Notepad++. And I've got that running right here. Here's Notepad++. It's really easy to find if you just Google Notepad++ and you can find that. Now, the one thing that's nice about FX Composer is that it actually does syntax highlighting. So uh, things like this value that says float3, for example, it'll put that in a different color just so that you know uh, it's a recognized term. And if we want to do that in effects, if we want to do that in Notepad++, um, Notepad++ has this thing called language here, and there are tons of languages that it supports. Probably the closest one to HLSL is C. So if I, if I pick the C language, you can see that now it's, it's turning my comments green and some of the things are marked, but not everything, and it's, it's not as good as it could be. So what I want to do, what I want to recommend is that you download a custom language pack, here where it says define your language. Uh, you can pick a file uh, where all of the terms for HLSL have been called out. And in order to do that, uh, what we can do is come here to uh, this website, The Danger Zone, and I'll put the link in the description below. And we're gonna go here to his Google Drive link where we can download uh, the file that defines HLSL as a custom language. And so I've already downloaded the file and it's here, uh, this HLSL.XML. So what I can do is I can come here under Language, Define Your Own Language, and then here I can browse to the file and select it. And once I've done that, in uh, my language method, uh, in my language menu, I'll have this new uh, language down here called HLSL. And if I set that, then all of the HLSL intrinsic functions and terms uh, will be uh, color coded just like they were in Effects Composer. So your workflow should still be uh, in 3ds Max as it was before. Um, and then you can use Notepad++ for editing the code and just hit save as you did in FX Composer and the changes will be reflected here in the viewport. Now there is one more thing that I want to show you and I don't know if you noticed this before but the normal map 
here looks kind of weird. It looks kind of like it's inside out. And this is the last thing that we're going to fix today. So let's take a look. If we look at our HLSL code, there's a spot here where I'm transforming our normal. This is the normal from our texture, and I'm transforming it uh, into world space using the normal, binormal, and tangent. And in 3ds Max 2014, I believe it was, they made a change to the way the normal and tangent data was stored. And so anywhere where you see this line, where I'm multiplying Z by the normal, X by the binormal, and Y by the tangent, we need to make a little switcheroo here. What I'm gonna do is change this so that the tangent is here and the binormal is here. And we'll save that. And bingo, you can see that now that we've switched our binormal and tangent, our normal map is now looking correctly. It's bumping out instead of looking like it's inside out. Okay, so with those three changes, uh, switching our viewport driver, uh, switching to Notepad++ with the custom HLSL uh, profile, and then switching our normal map code so that we swap the tangent and the binormal. Uh, with those three changes, uh, you can use all of the content on the DVDs uh, correctly. I hope you enjoy learning HLSL and be sure to post in the comments if you have any questions. I'd love to help out in your learning journey. Thanks for watching.